Okay, everybody, welcome to today's video. If you guys are new here, well, we have a little special thing for you guys today. I have a very special person coming onto the podcast today. This is the very first podcast that I have ever done, but let's just get you guys to know him a little bit. We're going to get to know him a little bit more, but this is what I am going to say. Um, this is Michael. I hope I say his name right. We're going to fix that if it's wrong, but this is Michael Q. Um, if I said his name wrong, I'm very sorry, but um, he is the CEO of Oni the Workshop. He is an executive of Odin Gear. He works on TikTok. Well, he does TikTok. He is super great at TikTok. He knows all the algorithms. He's super good. I will have his TikTok down in the description, guys, as well as his Instagram. He is a social media arbiter. I don't know how to say that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but that is a little bit about him. So let's get to, to Michael. What is up, Michael? Can you hear me? Got to. Let's. Hey, bro, how's it going? Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. Actually, hold on. I'm just gonna move. Uh, let's sit over here. Okay. Turn on this lighting for better, better lighting. Uh, I'm right. ready. Okay. So, uh, just just so I know how to say it, how do you say your last name? Like the letter Q. Okay. Yeah. Q. Q. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell me a little about a little bit about this uh, Ani the workshop that you have that you're the CEO of. Uh, so I started out on uh on IG a while back, and uh, then I had a first page where I grew it to twenty six thousand, thirty thousand followers, um, in the fitness niche. Yeah. And I started I started a second page with. Uh, in the fitness niche as well, transformation and memes, uh, where I grew to 300,000. And at the time I was coaching, uh, IG, how to grow an IG, how to monetize an Instagram, whatever. And then, uh, there was one guy from my city who messaged me through his, uh, his clothing brands account has like hundred K. And then we sat down together for two, three sessions. And, uh, then I worked with him for, uh, furthermore in the summer. And then I tried to ask for equity in that company and then he's, and, and he refused, but he said that as a counter, it would be interesting if we can work on the second brand that I have. So he had only the workshop, which was the second brand. And he put in a certain amount of money into it, built the website, uh, had the IG set up, whatever, photo shoot, everything. Yeah. And then we, and then we partnered, we partnered up for that brand together and we've been working on it for about a year, a year or something. All right, well, it looks it looks super good. Uh, I saw the Instagram for it. I've been checking out a little bit. I like the I like the designs for both of them, both uh, Odin and Ani. Um, I think they're super cool. Uh, I don't know how to say it in your uh, Instagram bio. It says social media, and then it says something after that. What is arbiter? That? Yeah. I just I just made up I just made up the term. I'm just like I'll call myself an arbiter. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Instead of saying like social media strategist or like entrepreneur, I'm just like you know what? I'm just gonna like add this like extra term at the end and just like yeah i like it it's, it's arbiter good... arbiter arbiter just means like referee all right well i see you've been yeah. doing super good on um tiktok as well how did you get started with that so again i was in the social media realm for a while um and then i'm always i, I understand the value of having attention and an audience yeah um so when I saw TikTok the first time, I was like, okay, there's something interesting going on here. But I was always the type of person to be like behind the scene as the strategist and just push other, either other people's content or like just like content that was unrelated to me directly. Yeah. I just, I wasn't interested in being a, an influencer myself or whatever. Uh, then I, I saw TikTok and I'm like, hmm, if you, if you put pictures up using that upload button or if you put like videos from elsewhere, I've tested it out. It's very difficult to grow. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to take the risk, even though it's a little bit of a challenge for me to be on camera, look at the camera, speak on camera, tonality of the voice, uh, whatever. I'll just like go through it to be uh, just to, like try to build up that personal brand. And uh, I started on, I started off with a first account where I just tested a bunch of stuff, violated guidelines, uh, was learning how the algorithm worked, all the features and filters and whatever. And then I started my second account in uh, a month after in November, mid November to end of November. And then I grew it from zero to 350 K now. So yeah, I think I'm getting there. Yeah. You have a pretty big account. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
definitely more than I'll ever have. That's, that's insane. Just to like, think of those big numbers. Um, you know, I only have like 2000 and then uh, I think it's like 1600, uh, total on YouTube and Instagram, but you know, you have 300,000. Okay. That's just, Oh, that's a lot. Um, yeah, the, the interesting thing is that TikTok, um, since most of the organic reach is coming from the for you page and it's artificially pushed by the algorithm, the amount of followers you have, whether it's like, so, so for example, the range, let's say it's like zero followers to like a hundred thousand, almost the same thing. The difference between a hundred thousand and 500,000, very negligible. It's almost the same thing because all of the tra traffic's coming from the for you page anyway. Yeah. I mean, unless you, unless you get to the point where you're like past 500 K or like past a million or you're like, um, verified and they have like some favoritism involved then there's going to be a noticeable a very noticeable difference till that point we're all we're all in the warm-up phase like you even now like you can have two uh two thousand followers and probably get more views than me like very possible yeah well, i think it's <laughs> super cool what you're doing um what sets you apart from your competition with like i've seen you i saw the video about um you with the russell brunson funnels and just all that kind of stuff like what sets you apart from your your other competition actually it's interesting i just uh i just bought like because russell brunson came out with a new book a new book about yeah. traffic i just ordered it i'm gonna probably get it soon um what sets me apart from the competition i mean i think it I mean, you're saying like on TikTok directly or just like in general? Uh, just like in general with your, you know, with your companies and with all of your content that you put out. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard. To, it's kind of hard to like uh, differentiate because I don't know what the standard of like differentiation is. But uh, I think for me, like, let's say like on TikTok, the difference between me and like a lot of people is that like most people, they have like a certain perception of what you should do. Yeah. There's no like, there's no like vision or brand identity that they've set up and there's no, and in that case, there's no like reverse engineering. Um, I think me, for me, I'm like, the reason why like I get relatively successful is because first of all, I have like relatively big, uh, ambitions yeah. and I, and I, my mindset is basically everything to everything I do till that point, till like that, like big ambition is pretty much just trivial. So like I'm trying out a bunch of stuff. I'm not crippled by the algorithm destroying my organic reach. I'm not crippled by my account getting deleted. So I'm always able to like keep moving forward. Um, and uh, and uh, I understand like the most effective approach to whatever social media platform you decide to engage in is it always needs to be as custom and as close or contextual to that platform. So like I don't treat IG and TikTok the same way by any by any uh, by any uh, in any way. Um, I understand like TikTok, like for example, just an example, like IG, understanding the algorithm, uh, YouTube, understanding the algorithm, Facebook is like a good supplement or bonus to know. It definitely helps, but it's a good bonus for TikTok. The algorithm is the prerequisite to get anywhere. Like if you don't understand the algorithm, it's going to be very hard to grow unless you're like already a celebrity or yeah. you're just like, you know, like you're Charlie D'Amelio where you started out like a while back. <laughs> all right it's just i don't i don't use tiktok um but i've seen like everybody just like go from pretty much you know not having anybody to just booming overnight and then with like it's just like it's such a different algorithm with youtube you have to like you know get suggested and you have to have good watch time what's do yep. you know what yep. the algorithm is like for for tiktok uh, the, the yeah i know the algorithm inside out the algorithm for youtube is like very seo driven so yeah. The way I describe it is like this, every platform, there's three things you need to work on. You need to work on the content to be, and the content has to be, again, uh, I, I call it like the three layers of viral content creation. So yeah. let's say on Instagram, the first layer would be macro captivation, captivation at the macro. So like the way people discover you is through the hashtags and the four feed. If you know that you need to have some sort of clickbait, same for YouTube, a strong clickbait so that they could, you could attract the eye of the person. The piece of content layer two is basically um, the amount of emotional uh, stimulation that piece of content can uh, push in the person that's viewing the content. Number three is like the uh, additional value that you that you decided to lay out in the caption. So there's content infrastructure and then understanding the algorithm to work with the algorithm to maximize your potential organic maximum potential organic reach. Um, for TikTok, 
uh, very, very different to like IG. IG, the way you get exposure again is hashtags, geotags, and explore feed. The way you get exposure on TikTok is strictly from the for you page, not even from hashtags. And um, the way it works is basically once you post a piece of content, they're going to artificially push that that content to a certain number of people. So the first wave is going to be 150 people or 100 people, and then 500 people, and then they're going to evaluate. Then they're going to push it to 1,000 people. Then they're going to evaluate. If you don't meet the criteria, boom, it stops right there. And then so forth and so forth. That's why, like, even if you have zero followers, you're still able to get hundreds of thousands of views because everything is artificially pushed. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, super, yeah. Super like the algorithm, it. The algorithm on TikTok, like, once you understand it, then you can make all of your content to be in line with the algorithm. Uh, so like optimizing for like the, uh, the, the, there's only five metrics, there's five metrics that the, that the algorithm will evaluate and the two primary metrics they evaluate at the most important is the rewatch rate and the completion rate. If you're able to make your content to be in line with them finishing the entire video or them rewatching the whole video, that content could blow up. So you don't optimize for comments, don't optimize for likes. They're almost useless. Okay. So completion rate, rewatch rate, and um, optimizing all your content for the For You page. Like understanding that most people are coming down vertically from the For You page, you can yeah. work with that a lot. You have to try to like grab their attention fast or like, I, I call it like uh, stopping the natural movement of the person that's viewing uh, on the For You page by putting some sort of horizontal transition or some sort of break to break that pattern or that movement. Okay, that sounds that sounds good. Like, <laughs> like I tried it. I've tried um, when I had TikTok the one time. I uploaded. I think it was like four or five videos, and like the first three, they were like a hundred, two hundred views, which was like all right, uh, just for me for the first ones. And then the next one had like twenty thousand, and then the all of them after that, it was just like ten, twenty, and I just like it was just so hard for me to figure out. And like all of my friends, they have TikTok and they're, they can't, like, they haven't done a single thing. They're just like four views, three views. And it's all my friends doing that. Um, so, you know, it's just super cool to like, you know, see what you're doing and see that you yeah. are able to grow on that just because, well, isn't TikTok like still like sort of new? Like, isn't it only a few years old? So, and then like with what Charlie D'Amelio did, like, you know, with her however many followers she has just kind of like crazy yep. she went from you know yeah i wouldn't say like a nobody but you know she wasn't known to now yeah, yeah i mean i mean tiktok is tiktok is gonna create a huge wave of new like just like new celebrities or new influencers um we're still in the early stages now oh yeah and by the way first before i say that uh if you're if your friend's page doesn't get over 100 views they're going to categorize that account. It means that they categorize that account as a zombie account. So you almost might as well restart the account. All right. I'm going to write Every, that down. Yeah, you can write it down. Every account on TikTok has what they call an authority rank. So let's say like for ease of explanation, the authority rank is like zero to a hundred points. Okay. Based on the behavior, based on, uh, based on the behavior, whether positive or negative, your authority rank is going to be uh, very uh, dependent on that, on those behaviors. So if you're putting out a bunch of low performing videos, okay, if you're put, if you're deleting a bunch of content, if you're getting reported often, if you're violating guidelines, like there's no tomorrow, authority rank will be completely destroyed. And that's why people think they have, they have a shadow ban, but it's not like, there's no shadow ban on TikTok. It's just the authority rank is basically pathetic. <clears throat> so if you have a zombie account, you might as well try uh, restarting the account and just, just changing it up with trial and error. Um, but, uh, getting back to the early stages of TikTok, uh, we're still in the early stage. Now I see a lot of people that what they did is that they started out like two, three, four, five months ago, and they had a little bit of success because the amount of creators and the amount of users was like night and day, there was almost no creators. So you're able to put out like average or mediocre videos and get a hundred thousand views or 50,000 or 20,000 views. Now, just because there's a mass, uh, isolation of like the entire planet because of coronavirus, all of the people that were not taking TikTok seriously are now starting to jump on TikTok because they have plenty of free time. And all of the people that were already creators on TikTok are now like tripling down 
So the amount of content that's being pumped out into the, into the, like the, into the environment is a lot higher, meaning that you need to really, really, really up your game and optimize for the algorithm. That's why I'm still able to like maintain like a good amount of views because all my videos now are like, they're really on point. Like every move I do on the, on those videos, all calculated strategic, every emoji, every countdown, everything. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. There's, that's, there's no that's mistake. Super cool. Yeah. So like, um, yeah. So like, that's why like I, I see a lot of people like crying. They're like, yo, I, I used to get like 80,000 views and now I'm getting like 3000 and I'm like, bro, that's because in the last month, competition rose massively in one shot. Yeah. So only the, I call it the wartime generals, only like the, the really, the really best or like the A tier of people are going to win and the regular people are going to start dying out. And you see it, like you see it with big accounts that have like 800,000 followers. Yeah. They gain like 20,000, 5,000, 3,000 views, but they're used to like a hundred thousand, a million views. Yeah, it's like super, super off, like, because everybody's home and <laughs> they have nothing else to do. Yep, because, uh, and those people, especially those people, if, if they didn't have any uh, mindset or um, if there was no mindset development, uh, because mindset is very important when you jump on, like, social media because it's going to basically determine if you're able to, like, cope with all of the uh, all of the hate, cope with the algorithmic shifts, cope with, like, uh, telling your friends that you, you're at 300, 500,000, but then the algorithm changes and now you're at, now you're getting like a thousand views and you're like, fuck. So like the self-esteem is really wrapped on social media. Uh, so all the people that got a little bit like high and arrogant because they were doing well, like two months ago, now they're all getting slammed and crying. Yeah. <laughs> I see them all coming to me. They're like, yo bro, the guy has 600,000 followers, a million followers. Yo bro, I don't understand what's going on. I'm getting no views. Nah, nah, nah. I think the algorithm's broken. I'm like, no bro. Because you're not, you're not, you're not maintaining. Yeah. <laughs> is is posting consistently like a a key factor in that, or is it kind of just like like, is, is there a specific time that you should be posting like every day, or is it kind of like you can just post one or two every now and then, and still get good content, um, good views. The consistency of the posting is one behavior that the algorithm likes. So if the, if you're a creator that comes back every day. And you're putting out one piece or two pieces of content. They like that. Um, what was the other question? Time of the day. Yeah. The the time of the day again is pretty much irrelevant. Everybody kind of uh, are, are stuck stuck on the time of the day because they're used to like IG, where it's like a centralized distribution of content. This is decentralized. And whether you're posting at 2 a.m. EST or freaking in the like any, any time of the day, basically, you're still gonna get that wave of 500 views or 100 views. And then 1,000 views, like it's artificially pushed. So yeah. it's, guar it's guaranteed almost. Um, so the time of the day doesn't matter at all. All right. How do you, uh, like, what do you do for a living? Uh, right now I'm finishing up like uh, software engineering as a student. And uh, I'm doing only the workshop uh, on the side, trying to get it, uh, get it to grow. And I do a lot of consulting for TikTok, IG, social media, and e-com. Does that... Um... I don't want to be like, uh, what's the word? I don't want to be like impolite, but like, does that, um, support you? The, um, uh, like Ani, the work. No, no, I, I, no, no, I still, I still, uh, I still live with my parents, super open about it. I have no ego and all the cash that I make, I reinvest almost all of it. Like there's, there's no like, Oh, I want to buy like this thing and that thing. That, there's none of that. It's like yeah. every, every move I do, just shove it back in. <laughs> uh, would you would you recommend that to somebody who's starting out like just to reinvest everything i mean look like it, it, if you if you want to like grow a big company or like have like some sort of success and you're not willing to and you're gonna you're gonna basically suffocate your business or suffocate your project because you want to go buy a bunch of stuff i mean like you're just gonna you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot because a guy like me and there's other guys like me that think the same way. Let's say like plenty of guys, okay? They're ready to like basically bleed or live at the at the minimal minimal cost or price or at the lowest like standard of living to like push out their company. And that company is definitely gonna win over your company because they have an additional cash flow or an additional like uh, capital to like invest in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I think I think I think people. They they uh they pull out too quick because they're impatient 
and they and they basically um they basically just want to like they just see a little bit of cash and they're like yo i want to go buy a bunch of like whatever yeah <laughs> how do you like how do you keep that uh sort of mindset like if you do get you know one month you do super good and you make you know a lot of profit how do you keep yourself like set on you know i need to reinvest this and i need to you know i need to stay on target and how do you not like you know go spend it uh i mean maybe it's been like because it's been a while that i've been kind of like in this whole like mindset development like my mindset is like very very strong right now and i only take a look at the best of the best of the industries and their mindset is very clear. Like yeah. they're not doing all of the short-term behaviors and like pulling out fast. They're like playing the long, 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 long game. And it's the same, the, the same thing as, as the way I, I think about it. I'm like, I, I don't feel safe until I get to like a really, really, really good standard. And the standard that I've decided to anchor or put, up, or put in place is like very high. Like I don't feel like even me, like for example, I had my 300K account deleted from viola for violation of guidelines on, on, on Instagram. Two seconds, violation guidelines deleted. And I don't even know which guideline I violated. Yeah. And uh, so like, that's why I'm like, let's say specifically for social media, I don't feel safe until I have a lot of followers on multiple channels. Yeah. If I only have social, if I only have like, let's say like 500K or a million followers on one channel, I'm scared bro. I'm very, very scared. Like, uh, because the algorithm could change you could violate a few guidelines. Uh, they could just like, the, the decision is basically in the hands of the ones that own the platform and you're completely at its mercy. So the only time you're gonna be safe, like for me, that was the way I think, is when you have a lot of followers across multi, like, a, like a, for example, like any celebrity, like let's say like The Rock has like, I don't know, like a hundred million on IG, uh, like freaking 10 million on a TikTok and like millions on LinkedIn. Like he's like, okay, cause he has like that network. Yeah. So that's the way I see it. And that's, and that's why I don't get caught up in like the short term, small stuff here and there. I just find it like trivial to even worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it means almost nothing at the macro. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the way I see it. Yeah. That's, that's good. Like this is, it's a good, it's a good mindset to have. Cause you know, like me being young, um, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even in college yet. I want to, um, you know, I want to be able to go out and like, you know, buy things I want to buy, you know, if I like a new car, I want to buy a new car or whatever. Cause you know, mine's, yep. you know, it's my first car. It's not, you know, not the fancy Lamborghini or whatever. And I feel like just like little kids or not little kids, but younger entrepreneurs, um, they're kind of just all over the place because they don't, they've never really experienced it and they don't have anybody um, what's the word? They don't have any mentor mentors to like watch over them and be like, you know, this is what you need to do. So like, what would you offer as advice to younger people or even older people who just don't know where to start or what to do with um, what they're doing? Well, I mean, first of all, for me, like I only got to this point because I basically, again, I only looked at the people that were the best in the industry, like the best of the best across multiple industries. And I study them like, I study, I study them super deep and I take elements of what they say, how they think, how they see things in whatever environment that is. And, uh, and so that's where I kind of started. Okay. Once I had the motivation, cause that's the motivation is like the foundation. And I, I basically had an idea of like a position or place that I want to be as far as like finances, family, happiness. And then how do I reverse engineer that process to get to that place? If my ambition is like freaking like, I don't know, like a hundred millionaire, I can't stop, stop. I can't start playing games of like, and, and like trying to conserve cash at like 30,000, 10,000, 5,000 here and there to like buy a couple of things because for whatever reason, like I need to get to that, to that position. So I need to do every move to try to get there. I think that's, I think that's the thing. It's like the first thing that we should like kind of think of, cause I know a lot of people that are younger or lost is like try to figure out like, in what place do you want to be in your life? I'm not talking about your job. I'm talking about like, uh, I'm talking about like a, a place where like financially you're free or financially you're, you're stable or financially you're good. Yeah. Uh, a place, a place like a physical place where you want to live. Uh, and like, let's say that place is like far away from you. You have to like find a way to like get there. Um, the, the, the person you want to be, uh, you want to marry or whatever, the person you want, the people you want to be surrounded with. Once you understand a clear, have a clear idea of like that vision, it's much easier to figure out what, what are the, what are the pathways and the options for me to get there? 
I think a lot of people, what they do, especially younger people, is like even my age, I'm 24. I don't know how old you are. But like even my age, 25, 26, 28, whatever, they're all like, oh, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And it's because they haven't figured out a place that they want it to be, uh, like a vision of where they want to be in the future. And so they have zero idea of like where to go, how to navigate, and they just fall into like depression, let's say. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not somewhere that uh, I would want to be or that I'd, I'd want anybody else to be, but... Yeah. Um, so, th- yeah. yeah. I'm so actually... That's, no, you go, you go. Yeah, that's, that's the way I kind of see it. Um, and then I just kind of like follow all the people that are like winning the game like very well. The college, like let's say for me, I want to be a business guy. The guy in college that's teaching business... I take the advice with a grain of salt because he may, he may have had a business in the 1980s. The 2020 environment is night and day to 1980s. Yeah. And is, if his business was making a million dollars, he has the mindset of a person that has a million dollars coming in or whatever. I want to be like, I, want, I only want to study the guys that are making a hundred million, 500, like 500 million, like a shit ton. Yeah. Because their mindset is like completely, completely different. Like if you listen to Grant Cardone, it's, he's, he tells people, he's like, don't take advice from the millionaire because the millionaire goes from, let's say like, let's say like 300K to 500K in assets to a million. And then he goes from offensive to try to reach that million dollar status. And then he, once he reaches a million, he goes into defensive. And you don't want to take advice from a guy who's defensive, who doesn't want to risk cash, doesn't want to whatever, who doesn't want to preserve, who, who wants to preserve. You don't want to take advice from that guy. That's a good. That's a good way to look at it. Um, <laughs> never thought of it like most, that. Most most people most people forget about even looking at the person who's financially uh, literate or free. Like let's say a millionaire, they're like listening to people that are making like let's say sixty or fifty k a year, and they're like, "Yo, that guy understands finance," and it's like, maybe not. Maybe not. You know, at least consider there's maybe something wrong with what he's doing. If your goal is to get further. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, for me, for me right now, I'm just trying to build up my uh, my uh, my audience, like the attention, uh, provide the most amount of value for the other for the people. I almost take no sponsorship deals. I've been approached by plenty of companies, whatever. I take almost nothing because I'm like, first of all, I don't want what they give. Like, if there's an exchange of products for something, yeah. I don't give a shit about what they're giving me. Mm-hmm. Um, even the cash, I don't really need it at the time right now, and I don't want to be like, I don't want my brand equity to be hurt or the audience that I have to think I'm a sellout too quick. Yeah. So I don't want to just accept anything. Usually what I'll do is if I negotiate with a company to do a sponsorship deal, it's going to be like overpriced on purpose Mm. because I'm like, I don't want to like go through that. And if I'm going to promote a, uh, promote a company or a product, it really has to be a product that I really like vibe with, you know? Yeah. Especially like you see this, you see this problem with a lot of people that are like, let's say like they have no followers, they have zero social media experience, but they just happen to have like a huge, huge, huge explosion of like follower bases for whatever reason, because they had a talent or their video went viral or whatever. Okay. Okay. But their mindset doesn't complement that amount of like success. And they begin to get like arrogant. They begin to like get crippled and they begin to get like just like they're not in the right place to like be able to like deal with a bunch of the stuff that happens once you reach that level. <laughs> uh, hang on. Let me so see. That's, that's why I always say mindset is the first thing you should work on is your mindset. Second thing you should work on is then tactics. Like I wrote, I wrote an Instagram ebook, a hundred pages. Yeah. The first part of the book, all about mindset of when you're starting on social, I can give you the blueprint to go viral and be famous and whatever. But if you don't have the mindset in two seconds, you're up. Or you'll be depressed or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So. And you live in uh, Canada, is that correct? In Montreal. How is it uh, there with the like all the coronavirus stuff? Oh, it's uh, pretty much in lockdown. I mean, not full lockdown, but like they have like the social distancing rules. You you could only go out with like maximum two people or something or like if you have if, it, if there's more than two people in the group then they're going to question it uh they could give you a fine uh i think we have like thirteen thousand cases in, or sorry ten thousand over ten thousand cases of coronavirus in our province so yeah 
anyways, this whole coronavirus thing, it's not going to go away until they have a vaccine or yeah. they have a significant amount of people that are immune. Mm -hmm. So we can expect to be like, that's why I like, I was talking to my friends about it for TikTok. I'm like, okay, right now there's a huge surge of people on TikTok, like creators, because they have nothing else to do. They're bored. They have a lot of time. When the, let's say the coronavirus thing were the last two months, which yeah. it, it definitely won't. Okay. Yeah. If the creators go back to work or to school, they now have less time for TikTok. So the competition should go back down a little bit. So it would give the chance for people that want to remain on TikTok, like hardcore, to like win the game again yeah. because competition is lower. The threshold to pass the evaluation points is a little bit lower. Um, but as of right now, I don't see it happening anytime soon. Like, I think now we've passed like that wall where the competition went up and it's only going to stay at this base for the rest of like history, let's say. Yeah. So everybody needs to raise their, their standards. Yeah, you just got to work it harder than everybody else. Let's see. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be? A billboard for myself? Yeah, just what would like, it, it could be anything. What would it, what would it be of? Like a billboard, that means like a thing where I write like information for myself or something? Uh, you know, like when you're driving on the highway and there's like big billboards right there? If you had like oh. one of those. I don't know. It'd probably be something related to Oni the Workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't think about that one. I mean, I'm not a huge billboard guy to begin with. I'm yeah. like very like, I'm like new school. Like billboards are like too expensive to, for the exposure you get. But um, yeah, maybe something related to my company or something related to my brand or a positive message related to like mindset. How yeah. do you keep a, a good mindset during all this? Like, you know, how do you stay like necessarily happy or, you know, positive with your content? Uh, I mean, first of all, the like happiness as a subject is contextual to each person, custom, custom, custom to that person. There's for sure an element of objectiveness to happiness, like an element of, uh, the way I remain fulfilled during like times like this, uh, first of all, like for anything related to self-esteem or confidence, it's like, let's say there's a pie and like there's certain sections to the pie and like, let's say like your dating life will be a part of your self-esteem and then your career path or your schooling or your whatever will be a part of your self-esteem. Then your hobbies and extracurricular part of self-esteem, family, part of self-esteem, friends, whatever. I think a lot of people, they, all they have is like school or work, yeah. well, let's say a job, like a whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have nothing else and they have a hard time getting girlfriends or whatever. So that's good. Another thing, their friend circles are okay, but maybe not necessarily the, the biggest factor to your self-esteem. And now that we've basically taken away the biggest self-esteem to many people, which is their work primary source of like their one stream of income, their work or their school. Now they're crippled and they're like, yo shit, I'm so depressed. So what I tell people to do is like, the best way to keep self-esteem, first of all, is to work on another project or multiple things. Like if you're going to be just focusing on like, let's say schooling, you're literally probably like crying right now because you're like, because like the short-term dopamine that you've released through like video games or like watching TV or like, like whatever it is, like short, like short-term stuff that only lasts for like, let's say a week, two weeks after that, you're like, yo, uh, I'm fucking bored. I'm not doing anything. So I, I would, I would urge people to like, take this time to like focus on another hobby or focus on another like uh, project or focus on another thing to like drive some, first of all, first of all, it's like to challenge yourself and challenging yourself and like passing through like obstacles is like a great, great way to like build up the self-esteem. Yeah. That, that to me is like, that's like the biggest thing. Like right now, like even if we're like coronavirus, whatever, I feel perfectly good. You know, like one thing that I'm kind of sad about is that there's no gym. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to invest some money into, into like equipment. Yeah. So now I'm good. Now I'm good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. I think, I think people like they need to start working on this stuff. Like, uh, like for example, like in the dating scene, like this, this gets me in maybe it's some trouble with some people. It's like they, for example, they'll, it's like they'll date somebody and then it's like that person they're dating is like, let's say a girl, let's say, cause I'm like a guy. Yeah. I'm dating, I'm, they're seeing a girl and like the girl, all she does is basically you ask her about her hobbies. All she does is like shop 
uh, shop, go out and eat, watch TV. That's about it. Like those are not like, those are not fulfilling or self-esteem boosters. Yeah. You have to actually work on something difficult and overcome that difficulty that will bring a lot of self-esteem. Especially those people, if not, like especially with, if their primary self-esteem was school or their girlfriend or their boyfriend, and now we've withhold we've withheld that from you. GG, it's over. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Um, Go ahead. Oh, I definitely, I definitely wanted to thank you for you know letting me do this with you. Um, if you guys have like questions, just uh, message me on IG at uh, at King. K I N G underscore K H I E U. If you guys want to send me an email, Michael M I C H A E L dot K H I E U at gmail.com. Thank you.